Hi, I'm Melissa Shannon from DigitalScrapbookingHQ.com and today I'm going to show you how you can start organising your digital scrapbooking supplies in Photoshop Elements Organizer. I'm using Photoshop Elements Organizer 10. However, a lot of these uh, principles and techniques will apply to any version of Photoshop Elements Organizer. Photoshop Elements Organizer ships with all Windows versions of the program and also Photoshop Elements 9 or 10 for the Mac. What we can see here is my digital scrapbooking supplies. I've got all of my digital scrapbooking supplies in, in this database. There's about 80,000 images or so that I've tagged. Now that sounds like a lot, and it is, because I've been organising my supplies since 2007. However, it makes it really easy for me to find the supplies that I want to use in my scrapbooking. I use smart albums and static albums, keyword tags, and searching to find my scrapbooking supplies. But today we're going to start from the beginning and show you how you can start organising your supplies in, in Photoshop Elements Organizer. I've now created a brand new catalogue and this is how your catalogue will look when you first open up Photoshop Elements. This is how your Photoshop Elements Organizer will look when you first open it, if you've never used it before. Now the first thing I'm going to do to set up my organizer is to go to the file menu and then watch folders. The watch folders means that every time you open up your Photoshop Elements Organizer it will check to see if any new files or fol have been added to the folders you want to watch. Because I'm using this catalogue just for my digital scrapbooking supplies and not my photographs, I'm going to change it to suit that purpose. So first off, I'm going to remove the watching of my pictures folder. I'm going to add a new folder, which is called Digi. Now this will scan the folder that I use for all of my digital scrapbooking supplies. And each time I open up Photoshop Elements Organizer, I can either automatically add the files to the organizer or just have it notify me of when it's detected some new files. I prefer to have it automatically add because if it, you ask it to notify you and you accidentally click no, it won't import those supplies at all. So it will leave gaps in your collection. So at this point I'll click on OK. Nothing happens at this point, it's just the next time you open up Photoshop Elements Organizer it will scan to see if there's any new files to add. So I'm just going to start with one kit and show you how I work from there. To import my first digital scrapbooking kit into the library, I'm going to go to File, Get Photos and Videos from Files and Folders. And then I'm just going to browse to where my digital scrapbooking supplies are. I'm just going to browse to my Tangy Baxa folder and click Get Media. Now it's going to run through and import every single piece of digital scrapbooking goodness from this folder. Now it gives me a warning list here of all the files that haven't been imported. These could be duplicates, text files, zip files, any files that um, Photoshop Elements can't handle. I generally don't worry about that and just click OK. And now you can see I've got a great range of digital scrapbooking supplies. Now I know that having this many supplies could be intimidating to try and sit here and, and tag them all. So it's at this point that you need to work out a little bit of how you want to tag. Think about the, the way that you scrapbook. Do you scrapbook by colour? Do you always go searching for a crocheted lace? Do you like folded flowers? How you search for your scrapbooking supplies will generally determine what tags you use. One of the first items you might want to tag when you're um, importing your digital scrapbooking kits are previews. 
So, a preview is a small a preview is a small image that shows what's contained within a digital scrapbooking kit. Here's one from Studio Tangi. Now, I find an easy way to find these previews is to go to Find by Details or Metadata. Go look for a file name ends with JPG, and the pixel width is less than 700 pixels. Now usually a preview image is only 600 pixels wide. So here we have a list of potential and then I'm going to do Control A to select them all and drag my previews tag on there. Now if you're interested in categorizing your previews further you might consider adding some further tags to them. You could tag this preview as word art and that way if you're looking for word art you just click on the word art um, tag and up would pop your word art previews and then how you would get to your word art files would be to use a properties window now by default this window is not showing in Photoshop Elements Organizer so we go to Windows Properties and then I'm just going to click this little T icon to clip it alongside, resize it so I can see more. Now for any of these previews, I can just click on this yellow folder icon and up will load my digital kit. This is a great alternative for people who just want to get started and don't want to spend too much time tagging. For example, so if I was just going to tag my previews, what I'd probably do is add a new category for themes. Then add a new keyword tag of beach and say vintage and baby, for example. And then what I do is I would click on my previews and apply the tags that I think apply. There's a baby kit, I'll drag my tag onto there. There's a nice vintage kit here. And then here's a beach kit. So that makes it easy for me to find my baby kits, my beach kits, and my vintage kits. And you could go from there and expand your themes to include a whole range of other items. For me, I like to have all my papers together by colour. So that's the first thing I'm going to show you. I'm going to create a tag for all my scrapbook papers first. So go to the Keywords tag panel on the right here. Click on the plus and then click New Category. Um, I'm going to type Papers for the name of this category. Now you may be asking, how on earth am I going to sit here with several hundred little item icons and work out which ones are papers? Well, this is where your searching comes in handy. You can go to Find and then by Details or Metadata. And I'm going to show you a great way to search and find all the files you're looking for. So I'm going to search for all of the following criteria. I'm going to look for a file whose pixel width is 3600, which is the standard for digital scrapbooking papers. And the file name ends with JPG. Now I can save this search criteria as a smart album and I'm going to call it Papers. I'm going to click Search and then in a matter of moments all of my scrapbook papers are together. So here's the little group of papers we have. At this point I think that I want to tag the papers by colour. So that's great. I'm going to move it down to a small thumbnail, add a colour tag to my papers category by clicking on paper and then new keyword tag. I'm going to choose the tag red. I'm just going to leave all the other icon by default and click OK. So now holding down my control key I'm going to click on all the papers that I think look basically red to me. And then I drag my red tag onto those 
papers. Now at this point I can do the same for green. Go to paper, new keyword tag, green, and so on and so forth. So now that we've tackled some of the papers, I'm going to show you how we can deal with the rest of our um, digital scrapbooking supplies. So to go back to our original view, I'm going to click show all. Now I'm going to tag the flowers in this collection. I'm going to go to find by details metadata, a file that contains the word flower and that ends with PNG. Now the reason I'm searching for PNG files is because generally your elements are PNG files and your papers are JPG files. That way if we have any papers with flowers on them they won't come up in our search. So let's click search. At this point I'm just going to add a new category for flowers. Click OK and then I'm going to just have a look and see why this one's in here. Okay, it has got flowers, but I'd say that's more of a silhouette. This one here also has tiny flowers on them, but it's more of a ribbon to me. This also is a flower, but it's more of a thistle. So for me, I wouldn't put that in my flower category either. So I'm going to con press Control A to select all the files. Press Control to deselect the files I don't want marked as flowers and drag the flowers on. We now only have 691 items to tag. Still sound overwhelming? Let's get through a few more of them quickly with you. Alphabets are another category of items you might want to tag. I'm going to create a new category for that one. Just going to call them alphas for short. Then I'm going to click and shift click on the last alphabet item and tag them all at once. Now if I browse through at the small thumbnail, I can just go through shift clicking to select all of my alphabet items and control clicking to get rid of any extras. Tag that lot as alphas, tag this lot as alphas. And another thing you can do with your alphabets so it's not so overwhelming is when you've got them all selected right mouse button click and then click stack selected photos and now you've got just one letter showing for your whole alphabet that makes it great because when you click on your alphas tag to see them all you're not overwhelmed by hundreds of letters you just see all the different alphabets you have now control shift q to take us back we've gone down from 700 items to 467 items untagged would you like to see more photoshop elements video tutorials visit digital scrapbooking hq.com for more tips tutorials and free online workshops